Hi, it's Mr. Knuckles Woodshop, and today I'm going to take a break from uh, doing any guitaring, and I'm going to show you a little project that you can easily build in your basement or your garage or whatever. Really simple, made out of one piece of wood and a few little bits of hardware and some glue. That's it. So, it is a chickadee house, or you could use it for downy woodpeckers, or I'm sure there are other birds that might inhabit it as well, but I, uh, I look for plans that were specific to a chickadee house. And I think the reason that this is specific to a chickadee house is, first of all, according to the plans, it's pretty important that the hole, by the way, this comes off, and obviously the house looks like that, all right? And you nail it to a pole or a tree or whatever. But, um, so, this is the depth of the, of the house, and the point of the hole being way up here is so that predators can't reach in and grab whatever's in there way down here where the nest is. So that's the first thing about it, about a, about this thing that makes it a chickadee house. Second of all, the hole is only an inch and a quarter around. So that sort of stops some of the more bigger predator, well, most other birds actually from getting in there. So chickadees and downy woodpeckers are, I guess, just small enough to get in the hole that size, but most others won't be able to. So that protects them as well. Another thing is the fact that it doesn't have a perch like a piece of dowel that you would often see sticking out from just below the hole. This one's got some saw kerfs, right? Those are probably maybe a quarter inch down or an eighth of an inch. Just, I use my miter saw to do that. But you could easily use a hand saw and just cut kerfs right across the whole thing. Obviously this is for um, the birds to grab a hold of. And so I guess wood, um, woodpeckers, obviously woodpeckers would be good at it, but I guess chickadees as well are good at grabbing that they don't need a perch, whereas some other birds would need a perch. So that stops a further amount of birds from getting in there and leaves you with just some small birds like chickadees and woodpeckers. And again, there's probably some other small birds that might inhabit a, uh, uh, a house like this. So a couple things about the design of the house. The first thing is you can see that little notch and you can see that you can see right through there's a notch on the other side and you'll notice that's a beveled cut and I just added that bevel because I thought that if any rain did angle down in there, it would more easily drain out or run out if the thing was beveled. So that's one thing. Um, the next time I do this, I am going to bevel this cut. This, this piece here was actually one piece. You can see the grain fits together nicely. It was one piece that I just cut in half. The next time I do it, I'll put a bevel on that so that any water that runs down and wicks into this won't in this case, it'll probably wick right through and potentially get into the inside. But if you've got it beveled that way, then because it's standing up, um, it won't wick through that joint because it'll have to go uphill. All right. So that's one thing I would add next time if I remember to do it. Um, this is beveled so that water runs off, but I don't think you need that. I think you could just, you know, make sure that your cut is a little bit uh, longer. This piece is a little bit longer and that way all water runs off as opposed to wicking in. The bottom is just a piece. Notice that this piece is a perfect width. It's the same dimension as that, which is one width of a board, one width of a board. This is one width of a board. So all you have to do is cut this piece to the right length, which is about four inches and I'll talk more about that. Um, it is the width of a board minus two thicknesses of a board. All right, so it's about four inches. But it's got little uh, notches on the side just to let water and any waste drip out. All right. What do you need to make this project? Well, you need just uh, something to cut wood with. You need something to make a hole with. An inch and a quarter if you want to do a hole the same size as mine. You need some wood glue. You obviously need a measuring tool and a marking tool. You need a couple of screws. Again, the point of those screws, obviously, is just to hold this in during the season. And at the end of the season, you unscrew them and you can get in there and clean out any uh, material that you need to clean out for the winter time, so that bugs and other pests don't make homes in there. And then next next season, it won't be uh, ready to go. So you need to clean out any birdhouse you need to clean out. So you need some nails uh, rather than use, actually, that's a screw. You need Finishing nails. These ones are a little bit too big, I think. You know, right? You're putting nail holes in right along the edge. So a nail this size is probably going to split that wood unless you made a pilot hole first. But uh, just a brad nailer, if you've got one, that makes it a lot easier. Some clamps to hold things in place. You don't need those, but it makes it easier. Uh, again, you don't need that, but it makes it easier. Um, you definitely need something to make a pilot hole for the screws. 
but you don't need two guns. This one, I mean, obviously it's just to screw the screws in, but you could just as easily use a screwdriver. So there's really not much that you need. I would say those are the only things that you actually need um, to do this project. So it would be a great project to do with your kids in the basement or like I say out in the garage or wherever you do your woodworking if you do any. And even if you don't do any, you could do this project outside. Only takes a couple hours, probably more than that. All right, so I'm using, as I said, one eight foot piece of, this is just cedar decking. So it's five and a quarter wide by five eighths thick. Um, you could use one by six pine. Just don't use anything treated because the chemicals in treated wood are not good for the birds. So keep it natural for sure. And then all you do is you take that board and you cut it into pieces. So I'll show you, those are the pieces, obviously. And I'll show you the dimensions. So this one is the back. So obviously that board right there, straight cuts on either end. It's 18 inches. All right, next one. This is one of the sides. So the reason that you have that angle is because it sits like that and the roof runs along that line and you can see the notch at the top, right? Beveled, like I said. Uh, one thing that's fairly important is the fact that you need to, show you what I'm saying, you need to make those bevels the opposite way. So if they're both going the same way, it's gonna be a problem. All right, so you need those cuts and let's see now. I had markings on one of them. Must be on this one then. Okay, so these are 15 inches uh, from there to there. And it's straight cut on the bottom. 30 degree, and the 30 degree angle is just something I figured out. You can make it any angle here, as long as it's a deep enough angle that water's going to run off. Uh, and then a little notch here, but that's a straight cut there with a beveled notch. All right, next one is your floor. That's again, one full width by four inches with notches on the edges and they're all straight cuts. And then we get into some bevel cuts. The roof, you can see is beveled on both ends. Uh, if you take a look at the one I did before, it's only beveled on one end. And so this is a 30 degree angle or miter. And so you need a 30 degree bevel on the end of the roof to compensate that joint there and um, you don't need a bevel on this side I just thought it'd probably make water run off a little bit easier but probably not really so the roof can be uh, it's gonna be about anywhere between eight and a half and nine inches or it could be longer than that right it just hangs over so the longer you make it the longer this overhang is gonna be as long as it as long as it clears this and so the water drips off instead of dripping onto this and potentially wicking inside um, so again, eight and a half to nine, 30 degree bevels on both ends, or at least on one end. And then finally, you've got this piece of wood, which is approximately 12 and a half, it can be longer, right? The reason it can be longer is because uh, this piece, we're talking about the front now, it doesn't matter if this hangs down past, past the, the actual house, right? So if it was longer, it would just look like that and that wouldn't be a problem, all right? So, but 12 and a half is gonna do it nicely. And then you put a one and a quarter inch hole in it. That top of that hole is 10 inches from the bottom. So again, and this, if this hangs over a lot, it's really gonna be 10 inches from like the floor of the, of the house itself, all right? Or 10 inches or thereabouts. Again, so there's lots of depth so that predators can't reach in and grab the babies. All right, one and a quarter inch hole and then it doesn't matter what order you, order you do this in, but I uh, I put the miter or the uh, the kerfs in it with the saw, and then I cut it in half. This part will be glued and fastened to the house. This one will be the one that gets screwed in and can be removed. All right. So those are the cuts, and then you just put put it together. Make sure that it looks like this. All right. Pretty simple construction. Again, uh, clamps will help and a nail gun will help. But other than that, you don't really need much other than a few simple carpentry tools. So there you go. There's a chickadee house or a downy woodpecker pecker house or any other bird that'll live in it, depending on where you live. Good luck.